holding back the power in this room right technical wonder, wonderfulness is this morning. And Peggy Olson is here with us, our licensed Unity teacher. Can I officially say that now? Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Months and years of classes and studying and doing so many things, and we're just delighted to have her be here this morning with us. She's also our prayer chaplain, trainer, coordinator, to lead us in prayer and then to read the daily word. Good morning. Is this on? Yeah. Doesn't want to stay. 
Uh, oops, I'll bend down. <laughs> well, Denise Rogier just got us thinking and moving. It doesn't want to change its position. That's good, my dear. Okay, thanks. All right, so Denise Rogier's song this morning, couldn't help sitting there and think, she's talking about our fifth unity principle. You gotta move your feet, right? You gotta put on your spirit and move. And I, every time we were um, singing those phrases, that just came to my mind. And let's take a moment to be open and grateful by going into prayer. Finding that beautiful, still place within. Breathing into our heart space. It was a beautiful request of Reverend Bronte for us to think of all the things we're grateful for. In this beautiful month, when we turn to gratitude, thanksgiving, we take time to be still and go within. We feel at a deep level how many things we have, how blessed we are, how much love and spirit actually does pour out, pour out from our own spirit. As we rest in this beautiful presence, This place where we can touch peace, we can invoke healing, and we raise our vibrations and energies, we send that love, that healing, those blessings, the beauty the feeling of gratitude and peace out to all, our world, our planet, all sentient beings. No matter what their circumstance or situation, we know we are connected, we are one, and we can send blessings to all of them. For this, we are always so grateful and thankful, and we say, thank you, God, thank you, God, thank you, God, so be it, and so it is. Amen. This morning, our daily word comes from our archives. This is November the 7th, which was a Sunday in 2010. And I love it. It's really great. It's day by day, I create a life of joy. The word is creativity. And I like to cook, so listen to this. Like a master chef, I begin each day with an empty bowl. Whatever the special of the day turns out to be, I get to be creative. creative. I get to create it. With God as my source, I have everything I need. I reach for wisdom and compassion, for imagination and zeal, for strength and love, for peace and change. I choose the ingredients of my day thoughtfully and prayerfully, co-creating with God. I add and take away in perfect measure manifesting a life of joy day by day. From morning to night, my bowl fills. 
At the end of the day, I reflect on what I have created. I give thanks for the divine creativity flowing through me. I realize what needs to be released and rest until tomorrow when I will begin again with a fresh new bowl. How wonderful, what a great daily word. The verse is from James 3, 13, and it says, Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness, born of wisdom. Thank you. Thank you so much, Peggy, for that beautiful, beautiful prayer. <laughs> Beautiful feedback. <laughs> Two kinds of feedback. The prayer was beautiful, and audio gave some feedback. <laughs> good, morning. good morning! It's so good to see people! Yay, people! <sighs> and thanks for everyone that's watching online. It's fun to see the opening and people signing in and putting up hearts and saying hello and good morning and connecting. Next Sunday, we are going to do some celebrating here, so I hope you show up in person. This might be the time to come back. If you're not comfortable sitting through an hour of service, come at the end. We're going to do some celebrating because Unity Athens has been here in Athens as a Sunday service for 45 years. Wow. And it was a study group before that. You know, Reverend Dr. Barbara Jackson and some others were... Back, making it go back then, and they even hired their first minister around 1976. It's also the end of my seventh, it's also the completion of my 17th year <laughs> here at Unity Athens. It sounded kind of final. And um, also my completion of 21 years in ministry. So we're gonna just celebrate all that and celebrate us and the way we've built community here in Athens, Georgia our beautiful building that we are so proud of. This space is just gorgeous. And I know it's fine to watch from home or wherever you are in your hammock or on vacation or something, but there's energy in this place. As Denise Rosier says in one of her songs, spirit is in this place. It's in your place too, but there's something, I'm saying heads gone, yes, there's something about being in the building. So I hope you will join us for that next Sunday. We have a few other announcements too, also. And there's details on everything that's going on in the e-newsletter. There's a link to that if you're not receiving it every week on the Facebook feed. Peggy holds a prayer and book discussion on Tuesdays and Thursdays mornings from 6.30 to 7.30, open to all. You can email her, info's in the newsletter. The um, Next Sunday is the celebration of life for fabulous musician and very dear friend, Cindy Lou Harrington. And that is at Atlanta, Unity North Atlanta. And it's gonna be at 11 o'clock. I will be there that Saturday morning. It made um, a little trickier for us to set up for the Pride Street Fest here in town. We would love to have two or three volunteers that could Go to the Terrapin Brewing, <laughs> not going in there to drink at 11 in the morning, but the outside is being offered to Pride to set up our tables and booths. We'd love for someone to be able to be there to set up around 11 o'clock and stay until I can get back from Atlanta and hopefully a few other volunteers. It's actually so much fun to do that, to set up and to talk to people. Unity and New Thought have always been um, very inclusive and very diverse, and we want to be sure that, especially younger people, know that we support them here in Athens. And we do. We did marriages long before it was legal, put it that way. So, and just so much of what we teach is inclusivity and diversity and equity. So, please. If you can help volunteer, just contact me at my personal email, Bronte underscore rights, W-R-I-T-E-S, at yahoo.com. A couple other very quick announcements. I'm starting a new book study. The book is The Trip to Bethlehem, written by Unity writer Hypatia Hasbrook. 
There's a new edition, a 2021 edition. The Zoom class will be on Wednesday evenings, November 17th through December 15th from 6 o'clock to 7.30. An equally set up class will be held in person on Thursdays, November 18th to December 16th, right here at Unity Athens. And you have to sign up to be there in person. Please let us know. They will be synchronated. So if you can't make an in-person one, you can attend the Zoom and vice versa. And the Zoom will be open to a much wider population of Unity. So info on that will continue in the newsletters or let me know if you have questions. I'm excited to be doing some classes again. So yay, that was the end of the announcements. Yay. And now is meditation time. If you're new to Unity type meditations, know that during it, we will have two to three minutes of deep silence. That allows us to continue to sweep any busyness out of our minds and to really feel the presence of spirit, perhaps the guidance or the wisdom or the nudges that we get while we're in that deep quiet. And don't be concerned if thoughts or other things come in. You just brush them aside or acknowledge them in mindfulness and allow yourself to continue to go deeper. You might want to turn off your lights. Thank you, Peggy. It's going to leave the sunshine on today, I think. And um, get comfortable, however you see that. I like to have my feet on the floor so I can feel the energy of Mother Earth and the embeddedness of the nature of faith in us and in our planet as we listen to some soft music and just begin to be more quiet and more at ease, feeling the light and the love of God. Perhaps focusing on something that you're grateful for, Thinking about our breathing, taking deep breaths, if possible, holding them just as long as you're comfortable and then letting go. Feeling your connection to the divine. That centeredness. Feeling divine health, wisdom, courage. Well-being. let go of anything that does not serve us. The breath. We feel the light that we are. We acknowledge the beat of our hearts. We give thanks to our heart, to our breathing, to our divine bodies, these vehicles that carry spirit in the world. Send out blessings to families, friends, dear ones, those that are on our hearts and on our minds. Picturing them, feeling that energy coming to them now. We 
are so grateful. We are so blessed. Send our prayers to our world, to our planet, to any places where we are feeling concern in the world. We send out love. Knowing that God, the divine, the infinite is everywhere. We move into the quiet, the silence. That deep and mystical place where we give and receive love. Drenched in the light and love of God. so blessed it's so wonderful to allow ourselves a time of quiet and peace so wonderful to know to know everywhere present in every part of our lives with every breath we take with every move we make we know spirit we see spirit with you being able to turn to this quiet, beautiful space at any time during your day or night. And when you feel concern or worry, that you're able to go into that deep place and know that all is truly well. All is unfolding. And that you are a magical expression of spirit in this world. Opening our eyes when we're ready. Sunshine and light, wow. So, November, yay! Two more months in this year, wow, we, we did good. We got through the year and we created wonderful things in our lives and we found new ways of doing old things perhaps. 
and our spiritual faculty, according to Charles Fillmore and his wonderful book, The Twelve Powers of Humankind, it's a really old man, um, <clears throat> our spiritual faculty is, there's a number of names to it, renunciation, elimination, people used to say way back, like, what does that mean, Bronte? What's renunciation? Why is he talking about elimination? <clears throat> so it's kind of morphed into release and letting go. And there's so many different resources on that, on the unity.org website, and a number of books that have been written. But it is a month that we can think of letting go. I was looking around for a type of maybe some meditation or talking about the power of release and I went to the unity.org website and had forgotten for a minute that I actually wrote the meditations for their 12 powers. So I'm going to read what I wrote and I don't know it by heart. But this is a meditation on the power of release. You can find it there. We have copies here today if you would like that. In the quiet of thought, I ask for guidance on what and how to let go. I clear out, eliminate, and give away what I no longer need. We're going to talk about that a bit. I remove physical clutter, the unused items and things I've outgrown. Then I release habits, dependencies, unhealthy boundaries, and relationships that are not for my highest good. I release any unforgiveness well, or judgments that tether me to the past. Instead, I affirm a vital, positive life in the present, present, right now. My experiences in all their variety have led me to the beauty of today. I let go of negative thinking or limited ideas about myself and my capabilities. I release doubt and fear. I break free from any feelings of inadequacy or lack. I shed the habit of criticizing others or myself. As I continue to release what no longer serves me, I make room for delightful circumstances and opportunities. Okay then, what can you release? Declutter at home is a big thing. And it's a way of physically, I believe, kind of turning away from busyness and clutter into that openness of spirit. It's a way of demonstrating and allowing energy, especially in our homes or our offices or our cars, to let that energy flow. We're talking about how energy is in this room. And I'm looking at places in my home where, okay, it seems kind of stuck, or there's too much stuff, or there's something on the shelf that I haven't touched in years. Why is it there? It could be serving someone and brightening up someone else's life. And so I was dwelling on what a great job I was doing about decluttering at home. Kevin, if you could put that picture up of that one item. And I was like, oh, I have been, I've been decluttering, and I think I've been talking for years about anything broken in our home has broken energy. It holds broken energy. And I walked into the bathroom, and it did not say Unity Athens live stream. We'll give Kevin a minute to put the picture up. And there was something there that hadn't been working in three months. That alarm clock lying on its side in the bathroom with the leg broken off of it, but it wasn't working even with the leg, because some of you might be saying, we could just fix that. I can see the little screw in here. No, it was just not working. Why was it in the bathroom? Because that was like my last alarm clock. If I was turning, you know, if you reach over and you turn off your clock by the bed. So that was the one that made me get up when I really needed to be somewhere. So then I was like, well, I don't want to throw it in the garbage because why would I throw something metal in the garbage that's going to go into a landfill, right? So I thought, well, I'll have to make a trip to the dump. And I may just do that to the Athens landfill. We were talking about that earlier today. 
and I'm just going to take my one alarm clock if I can't find anything else, like some old gallons of paint or some other things that they accept over there. And I'm going to probably make that like a message to spirit that I am really letting go of that which doesn't work for me. Thank you for pulling that off, Kevin. So if you're here in person, you might want to think about that one thing that you could let go of today. You might go home and say, you know, that's right. I've got this or that hasn't been working, it's broken, or it's something that might be someone else's treasure, even if it feels like old and worn out to me. And if you're at home or wherever, backyard or in your office somewhere, think about, look around and see if there is something you can let go of, just something that is no longer serving you. We have two pumpkins on the stage, by the way, if anyone here would like to take them with and put them in their compost pile. They've go, gone to the highest bidder, free Peggy. Okay, pumpkins are gone. So think about that, letting go, releasing, physical. If you don't have time to clean up your entire car, look at the glove box. If your entire room is cluttered, maybe one drawer. That allows the energy to flow more easily. But it's not just physical things. We also have clutter sometimes in our minds, in our thoughts. And one of the things I was reading the other day, it said to be aware of letting go of incorrect boundaries in your life. <coughs> Excuse me. And what might be an incorrect boundary? It might be a line you've drawn that isn't the healthiest it could be, okay? Healthy boundaries are so important. I was chatting with a friend, and the friend was telling me about another friend who wasn't acting in a way that was congruent with her belief systems. And the friend said to me, I am teaching others that are in my space what and how to react if they want to be in my inner circle. Wow. We kind of do that anyway, do we not? Sometimes better than others, sometimes depending on how close the relationship is. But I said, I've never, that I can think of, intentionally done that. Okay, this is the way I'm teaching you how to be if you want to be close to me, or living with me, or in relationship, or whatever. So think about your boundaries. Other things that we can declutter are the ways we talk about ourselves, the ways we think about ourselves. We can release any thought of lack or limitation. If we have often and commonly described ourselves as one way or the other, I've been saying lately, I'm so busy, my plate is so full. Well, I am busy and my plate is full, but that does not help me one bit to say that. What would be better? I have a lot to do or I'm enjoying taking things off my plate, or there was an affirmation I have on a card that says, I take care of things, I get things done, I delight in finishing a project in great time with ease. Takes, can you feel the burden lifting off our thoughts by doing that? So think about releasing our ways of thinking about ourselves, our ways of thinking about others. And as we do that, then we can, I think, have a clear channel to disperse light. Now, how do we disperse light? Some of you are practitioners, Reiki, healers, prayers, that's one way to disperse light. Another way to disperse light is to actually, actionably think about it. How does it feel when you're sending out light? I know Unity World Headquarters and Unity World Ministries are talking about experiential spirituality this year. What does it feel like to be living in a spiritual experience? What does it feel like? How do we do that? What is the difference in doing it? I came across a study 
that was done in 1997 was a scientifically controlled study conducted by German researchers at the University of Kassel, K-A-S-S-E-L. It has shown that while the chest area of an average person emits only 20 photons of light per second, now think about that for a minute, I just haven't been thinking about photons coming out of my heart, you know. 20 photons of light per second. Someone who meditates on their heart center and if you're getting calls from your prayer chaplains, like members here do, think about membership. They always say, go into the heart center. They often say that. Someone who meditates on their heart center and sends love and light to others emits an amazing, what was it, 20 photons? 100,000 photons per second. This was a scientific study that saw that. 100,000. This is 5,000 times more than the average human being. Numerous studies, it goes on, have also shown that when these photons are infused, so not only that, but when we infuse these photons with a loving and healing intent, their frequency and vibration increases to the point where they can literally change matter, heal disease, and transform negative events. Whoa. I mean, we know this. We know the healing arts, we know Reiki, we know meditation, we know just hands and prayer. So many studies have been done on this. I love when the science gets, I won't even say tangled, when the science dances with metaphysics, hmm. 10 minutes of meditating on compassion, on kindness for others, and you will see its effects all days. That's the way to maintain a calm and joyous mind. And that is from the Book of Joy, Lasting Happiness in a Changing World by the Dalai Lama. Another part of this went on to say, secondly, a specific person with an actual need must be identified, I wouldn't say must to anything, but could be identified as the receiver of the transmitted light. So part of this whole energy of renunciation, elimination, release can also be the positive of releasing light, which also just continues to reform in us, reform in us. So think about that. We're going to play a song by Karen Drucker called You Are the Face of God. She was at our Southeast Unity Convention a couple of weeks ago. And I've heard her sing and I've heard her in person a number of times. We went to a talk by hers years ago. And she said when she's singing the song, when you're listening to it or singing it, you're the face of God picture someone in a chair next to you not the person actually sitting there if you're sitting with somebody in an empty chair picture someone you love something you love maybe a country you love and send them these lyrics those photons that are you that you know they're wonderful because they just keep forming you're not ever going to run out of these photons Think about from a place of heart and loving kindness and send it to that person. And if you can't do the chair thing, just picture them in your mind, maybe looking at you. Maybe they've passed on. And you can send them love and light that way also. That veil is thin. Also, we're gonna do other verses of it and then picture yourself. Send it to yourself. And then send it to somebody else. So Kevin's going to play the song and just kind of get into that space. You have all these gifts from God, these 12 powers. You can combine this with love and light. You can combine it with imagination, with faith, with strength. 
strength, with will, with the power of power. You will face a God. Maybe someone you love dearly. I hold you in my Let's start with that. Someone you love dearly. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. You are the face of God. I hold you in my heart. We do this on Mother's Day and Father's Day, but this you is You are a everyone. part of me. You are the face of God. Feel that love. Photons. You are the face of God. Blessing. I hold you in my heart. Picture the connection between you and this person. You are a part of me. Breathe. You are the face of God. Feel your body lighting up. You are the face of God. I hold you in my heart. Maybe think of someone that is more difficult for you to be in a relationship with, to be in family with, to be in the world with. It might be someone you don't know personally, but that bothers you or is in the news. You are a part of me. You teach God is light and in every You are the face of God. You are the face of God. You give something a little easier or a little more difficult. I hold you in my heart. This is what you unites us. This is what me. connects us. You are the face of God. You are the face of God. We're not God. trying to fix anybody, change anybody. I hold you in my heart. Just appreciate it. You are a part of me. And turn this back to you. You are the face of God. See yourself, whether it's you in a mirror face of God. or a picture of your mind. I hold you in my heart. You might picture someone singing this to you. You are a part of me. Someone in the body, someone that's passed. You are the face Holding of God. you in light love. You might be are the furry friend. Might be our planet. You are the face of God. And so it is. Wow, I can see those photons. They're just emanating from everybody. Kevin, can you see them on the, did the whole screen just start lighting up? Kevin's nodding, yes. The whole screen just started lighting up with photons flow. Your photons are flowing. <clears throat> if someone asks you how you're doing today, tell them your photons are flowing. Okay, and they, if they nod, like, okay. <laughs> it's okay, too. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, yes, please try to do that a couple times this week. Especially, you know, when we get upset with someone or angry at something that's going on in the world or upset with ourselves of something we said or did or could have done better, it's fine. It's good to feel your feelings. I'm reminded of that all the time. Good to feel the feelings, but let's turn it into something more positive. Let's turn on the photon flow and brighten up the picture in our heads, brighten up the screen, make things better. So let's remember it's really a lot easier than we perhaps thought to move into consciousness more, to live an even more positive and productive and spiritual life by letting go of that which isn't working in our lives fixing it if possible, watching the cluttering and the decluttering, to be aware of our boundaries and our attitudes, to listen perhaps more than we speak, really listen to people. Mark Nepo did a whole talk at a retreat on deep listening, because when someone's talking to us, sometimes 
we're automatically thinking, what am I gonna say next? How am I gonna respond? What should I say to this person? Instead of total listening, just being there, looking them in the eyes, if that's not comfortable, just listening with the ear. How can I respond to this person? And then finally, to remember, turn on your photons and just take time, maybe every day, maybe during your regular meditation practice, just to turn that on, that light, but especially if you feel yourself during the day at any point being gnarly or maybe judgmental or maybe mm, critical. That energy doesn't help us as much as positive, productive. What is the blessing in this type energy? And so it is. Thank you for being with us. We always have time for our sacred exchange. And that is where we understand that as we give, we receive. We've mentioned in the past couple of weeks, we had a very large maintenance bill and we're hoping that people can just give extra if possible. Always up to you and between you and God. What you give, I know I'm upping my giving because of it. And we're very delighted and grateful that we have remained in this building all these years, and especially during these 18, 19, 20 months of different living. Um, but please, your support is very much appreciated at this time. So please look in your heart and see if there's maybe a way you can support us now and in the future. We hold our gifts or the thought of our gifts over our heart. We have a sacred exchange basket over on our special table and other baskets around the room. We say our sacred exchange affirmation together, knowing, knowing all the teachers and metaphysics teach us, as we give, we receive. As we let go, again, letting go flows back to us multiplied abundantly. In God we trust. It's on our money. In God we trust. We say our sacred exchange together and when we get to the name of God, that's your spot to put your name for God in. Divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. I am so blessed. Thank you, infinite spirit. And so it is. So I walk over to put my gift in the sacred exchange basket. Yes, thank you, God. And as we close out today, remember if you are, details of all the announcements are in the newsletter. Please consider helping with the Pride Fest. It's such an important part of what we do and teach here. And if you are interested in details on beloved Cindy Lou Harrington's memorial event, and it's gonna be a lot of people. She had a lot of dear, dear friends in many different areas of her life as a teacher, as a musician, and as a spiritual person. That is next some, next Saturday at 11 o'clock at Unity North Atlanta. Okay, so we're gonna close with I Send My Love by Karen Drucker. If you could get that ready, Kevin. And we're gonna do our prayer of protection before we sing. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. And as we sing, I send my love. See those photons flowing out with your love? Because <clears throat> love is the amplifier of it, right? And we just see our world blessed and our community blessed and ourselves and all. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for being in person. It's so good to see folks here. Big love to you all. And we sing together now. You can sing if you want to. We're, we're open to singing.
over the mountains I send my love over the sea I send my love into the heavens and it returns to me I send my Namaste. Mm-hmm. 